video we're going to learn more about how to work with colors. Paint comes in many different containers. Pots and dropper bottles are the most common. Before use, give the paint a good shake so that the pigment and medium are properly intermixed. Paint pots are more prone to drying up. If you find that the paint is becoming thick and clay-like, you can add a film of water on top of it and leave it for a few hours to be absorbed. Excess water can be decanted. To prevent further drying, clean out the lid and give the pot a good shake after each session, which deposits some paint in the lid and seals it off from the atmosphere. The paint market is dominated by acrylic paints, as they are non-toxic and can easily be solved in water. Metallic paints contains flakes of aluminium which will disperse in the water pot when you clean your brush. These flakes tend to be absorbed by the brush and contaminate other colors when you're using them. To avoid this, use a separate water pot for the metallic paints or paint metallics in a separate session. Paints based on other mediums require other solvents. For my alcohol paints, I use ethanol. Oil paints require organic solutions such as white spirit. It goes without saying, but paint residuals constitute a hazard for the environment when poured down the sink, and they will pass any and all filters inside the water purification plants. To minimize the damage, you can empty your water pot into a large container and deliver it to the nearest waste disposal facility once it's full. I'm using a 2 liter milk container. The covering properties of a paint depends both on the quality of the medium and the density of the pigmentation. Brighter shades generally have a poor coverage, seen here as an example with blood red and that's because they are intended to be used as highlights on top of another paint coat. Base paints with their higher pigment density cover better. Here it is exemplified by Macrite Red. When you're applying a coat of paint, you have to take into account the thickness of it. Thicker paints and coats cover better, but tend to retain brush marks and obscure details. Diluting paints will reduce these negative effects and increase the flow and drying time of the paint at the cost of reduced opacity and covering properties. The color might change too as the pigments in the paint are separated. Still, multiple thin coats are better than a thick one to ensure a smooth finish. There are a number of products on the market which you can use to dilute your paints, although plain water is fine in most cases. Water can't be used to dilute washes, inks, or metallic paints. 
washes or inks will lose their properties, which I will discuss in a future episode. Diluting metallics with a moderate quantity of water is usually fine, but when heavily done, the metallic flakes will be suspended and a mess will be created. Bear in mind that you can't use water or water-based mediums to dilute non-water-based colors, such as alcohol-based or oil paint. Here is a comparison between diluted and undiluted paint. Notice the difference in opacity. Thinner mediums and glaze mediums such as Lohmann medium are actually paints which lack pigmentation. I have the Lohmann medium to the left and the thinner medium to the right. These mediums are suitable to thinner metallics and washes. Retarder mediums are usually glycerol based and act as a sponge to absorb the water and reduce the rate at which it evaporates. Even though it increases the drying time, it won't actually dilute the paint, which is why I never use retarder medium on its own. Now let's take a look at what is known as the color wheel to get an idea of how colors behave. There are three primary colors in the spectrum, those being blue, yellow and red. Black is created when they are mixed in equal proportions. By mixing the primary colors pairwise you can create three additional colors orange, green, and purple. Transitional tones are achieved by varying the amounts of the respective parts. Adjacent colors on the color wheel are known as harmonies, and this blend naturally together when placed next to each other. Opposite colors on the color wheel are known as complementary and contrast strongly. For an even more dramatic effect, you can add black to one and white to the other, to create what is known as discrete. By adding a small amount of a color's complementary tone, you will darken it as this creates a mix between the three primary colors. On this custodian guard, the golden armor and the red areas are harmonies while the blue jewels complement the gold. Blue is in this case a spot color. This is the simplest paint scheme execution, having two harmonies and one complementary tone in a smaller amount. The blue flames on this flamer really stand out among the warmer tones. A great way to expand your color range and personalize your paint scheme is by mixing your paint. You 
might seem a little scary at first, but it's really easy. Use an old brush and some water when mixing your paint. A palette with wells will reduce the contact surface, increasing the drying time. Different colors behave a little differently when mixed together. Here's a guide to help you get started. Lightening black with white will create a mechanical gray. To get a warmer gray, you can lighten it with white and brown or green and red. White can be used to create new shades of grey from black or dark greys. Mixed together with a grey and a neutral brown, it will create a brown grey or an interesting skin tone, depending on the proportions. Red is a very flexible colour and should be lightened with orange or yellow and darkened with green. Adding white will create pink, adding black will create burgundy. A pink flashy salmon color is formed by mixing red with white and yellow. Skin tones can be mixed by adding light beiges. Orange on its own behaves similarly as red. Yellow tones can be lightened with white and darkened with orange tones. If you add black, you will get an olive color. Purple can be shaded with black and lightened with a brighter color of itself. Adding white will give you a grey purple or mauve, depending on the purple used. Blues need to be shaded with deeper blues rather than black, as adding black will make the blue look very grubby. Blues can be lightened by adding white, but this makes it look very pastel-like. To soften the change, you can use a brighter blue before adding the white. As demonstrated by the color wheel, blue and red create purple. Greens are like blues in that they need to be shaded with deeper versions of themselves and rather than black. You can also use a little red. They are very easy to mix into lighter shades. You can add yellow, white or even grey to make different shades without compromising the underlying color. Most metallics can be darkened with black and lightened with a bright silver. There are exceptions, gold for instance should be darkened and lightened with a brighter and deeper shade of itself. Most browns can be lightened with white and darkened with either black or a dark brown. Red browns should be lightened with a yellow based brown as white will create a skin tone. Likewise. Yellow based browns should be darkened with a red based brown. Bear in mind that this is not a complete guide and only aims to give you a notion of how the different colors behave. Don't be afraid to experiment and find recipes of your own. Here is a quick summary of this episode. Firstly, we have looked into how you should treat your paints before use and after use to maximize longevity. We now know how to fill paints and what to utilize depending on the type of paint. We have explored the concept of opacity and coverage. And lastly, we now have a notion of how colors behave in respect to the color wheel and mixing, as well as the meaning of spot coloration. And that's all for this episode. I hope it will help you in your hobby and in your process of creating your own paint schemes. 
thank you for watching.